shelter and a dry stone. Though from this day, my own hands will make a tent for me. An ambulance, call an ambulance. Good woman. You broke a personal record there. Don't we make a grand pair? My mother is seven months into recovery from a stroke. Me celebrating six months on the dry. Brett. Your father. Yogurt. Supposed to be good for my stomach. Yogurt. Fix you. We're detective. Keith Jennings. And you want his number to congratulate him? Jennings is hard work and he's a team player. Team player? He really plays early. Jennings has to work hard just to cover his own mess ups. That's suicide, the Bradley girl. Where are we? As well as the fall, there were signs of an overdose. Toxicology should be back later today. <sighs> okay. You'll make detective. You've been a book sheet for what, four months? Five. Five months. I did a year. Do things by the book. But be seen to be doing them by the book. Thank you, Detective Sergeant. Horrible tragedy. Beyond misery for her family. You didn't ask me here to see if I know any good allergies. You have a reputation. A skilled finder of lost things, hidden things, truths. Easy, Professor. Flattery goes straight to my head. I become insufferable. The guards seem content with the verdict of suicide, and perhaps they are right, perhaps. What about misadventure? A student gets high on something and, well, very temporarily gets high on something else. There was a note wrapped round Sarah's wedding finger. What did it say? Uh, only the guards know. Maybe they told the family. You say Sarah was a drama student? Oh, yes. She dropped one of my drama courses last year. As I recall, she didn't have any particular talent or interest. Sarah was brimming with self-confidence. I really cannot accept that she chose to end her life. I'm asking you to look into it. And I'm willing to pay. Blood tests are due in tonight. We'll know more then. But it looks like heroin. Seriously? Her arm's marked up? Single puncture mark. Must have been her first time out. 
Not exactly your usual down-home variety smack overdose, is it? That's the note that was wrapped around her finger. This was done on an actual old typewriter. Holes punched in the paper. It's I who am desolate. I, Sarah, that will not live till I am old. And that's Deirdre. Who? It's from Deirdre the Sorrows by John Millington Singh. The line is Deirdre's. It's just been changed to Sarah here. And the costume, she's a perfect Deirdre. What? As soon as I left it, the guard of training college stopped teaching the great tragic fairy tales of Ireland. Jack, you know why I asked you to come here? I get summoned so often to the apartments of young ladies and I stop questioning it. It's one thing you see in a file in passing that, say like this, I've carelessly left lying around. But I can't bring you evidence or make you copies like this anymore. Is this about hassle from a bow? That new Detective Sergeant Griffin? This is about my career, about trying to do things by the book. Oh, Jesus, you're kidding me. Changes. Do not. This is from my day and all that. <laughs> the unmissable slow dance set. Here's how the story goes. Deirdre was born one of the world's great beauties. And King Crawher of Ulster vowed when she was of age he would marry her. He had her raised deep and safe in the forest where no lusty warrior could fall in love with her. That rings a bell. By the time Deirdre came of age, the king was a trusty old devil. And Deirdre was headstrong. She fell in love with a handsome young warrior, Nisha. They ran up to Scotland together, where for seven years they lived in bliss. <laughs> Deirdre was too independent to live in hiding. She insisted they come home and face the old king together to demand her freedom. And? Early. Anything interesting? Come on, I told you a story. And I brought you pictures. So, Evans? Blow the candles out, pull the latch after you. Oh. What happened? Deirdre the Sorrows. They come home to face the king and... The king has Deirdre's lover murdered. And rather than marry the king, Deirdre kills herself and joins her lover in the grave. So, Deirdre the Sorrows' verdict suicide. I was thinking spicy Thai, maybe fiery Mexican. But no, Kate Newman into the hospital soon. We're not here for the hospital. We're here for the morgue. And this is the only puncture mark. Yeah. Blood tests are unusual. There was heroin in her system, but that wasn't the overdose. Sarah would eat on hospital grade morphine. Enough to kill her if the fall hadn't. Morphine, not heroin, in one injection. No, only morphine was injected. They found traces of aluminium on her lungs. Yeah. Tim Foyle, she was a smoker as well. How long was she chasing the dragon? For probably more than a year. So? She decides on suicide but wants to exit on something purer than street brown. Only question is where she get the morphine. We could check the hospital for patient prescriptions. It'll take a court order. Okay. That's not the only question. Dressing up, the literary nose, it feels wrong. Put heroin in the mix, a lot of things will stop seeming wrong. Hi, Linda. Good to see you. I can say hello to Linda. You're looking well. Likewise, Jack. That's the small talk done. Come on, it's the first case in months. Ah, ah, Liam. Adelation muzzle for him. For now, you'll just have to take him as he is. See you, Linda. So I read that play you were talking about. Deers with the whatever. But some of it, it's hard going. But I found something. 
Look here. Start of Act Two. I came in the shower was before the dawn. And? Came in the shower. Brilliant. Great. You already sound like a student. You can attend Sarah's lectures. Get the measure of her classmates, her lecturers. You're sending me to school. If it helps, think of it as undercover work. Those and those open that shut. Mr. Gorman, your client, right? You know him? We interviewed him, of course. He doesn't believe that Sarah fell. Well, not drunk. Are the guards still thinking suicide? That's the line. Sarah had a history of drug use, so... Oh, if she was alone, how did she do up all those dress hooks? Jack, put that away. Rosary's about to kick off. I can feel it. Mr. Gorm? Yes. Uh, Garda Kate Noonan. Oh, good to see you again, Garda. A development. It turns out your expertise could be of some use. Well, perhaps you misremember my expertise is dusty Irish literature. Yes, and we need to talk about John Millington Singh. Jack, oh, that's not public. Have you met Lawrence Doyle? He taught Sarah before this dreadful business at Jack Taylor and Garda Noon, and they're piecing together what happened to Sarah. Mm, personal interest, Mr. Taylor. Just an interest in the truth. Well, let me know if I can help. For now, I'm running late. Yeah. So, John Millington Singh. <laughs> well, visit me whenever you like. Company is always welcome. <laughs> Please, no funny stuff. Yeah, just pop by Sarah Bradley's. Okay. What the hell do you think you're doing? You see a typewriter anywhere? Out, now. There's nothing here. We already took our smoking stash. See these books? A random collection. Strange for a student. Every one of them came from the same shop. Downstairs, now. Griffin's coming by and I can't have him seeing you here. What's he 
he doing here? I'm a concerned citizen touched by a local tragedy. I'm here to pay my respects. Is there something wrong with that? I know about you, Taylor. You're not a journalist and you're not a cop. What you are is trouble. Well, that sounds familiar. You sent me a Valentine's last year. Okay, Taylor. The guards don't consider this a murder. I'd hate to think I was interfering with an investigation. There's people mourning in there. You come in, Kate. I told you about doing things by the book. And the next day I find you giving that crazy bastard a guided tour of a dead girl's home. Look, I know you used to go way back. If you want to get ahead, scrape that guy off. <laughs> 